How's it going, guys? Welcome back to the Black Metal Rebellion. Uh, I'm your host, Jesse Morgan. Thank you, uh, thank you for watching my last video, by the way. Uh, the uh, When My Depression Hits video. It, um, to be all honest, it actually was supposed to be a fairly serious video. Uh, when I first tried filming it, it I, the intent was to make it a very serious video and kind of uh, just kind of get people's attention and just kind of make people aware that, you know, depression is real and not like to be made fun of or take lightly or anything like that. Uh, there's a difference between having depression and being sad about something for a little bit. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a different video. Uh, but just letting you know, uh, the video I did was uh, I recorded it and then it got messed up. Uh, I had just the germs playing in the background and Facebook or not Facebook, but Facebook would probably copyright it on me too somehow, but YouTube copyright the video, copy wrote, copy writ. Either way, they copyright strike the video and I couldn't use it. Um, so I just deleted it. I made a shorter video and it ended up turning into the one you saw with, um, the ending. I'm not going to spoil it for people who haven't seen it yet, but, uh, yeah, it, uh, it it wasn't originally intended to go down the way it did, but I'm I'm happy with the video, and hopefully people can just just take it for what it is. Uh, if you want to take it seriously, you can. Uh, if you want to take it as a joke, you can. I'm not going to be upset with either way you take it. Um, and for anyone who's going to be trying to point their fingers at me saying that I don't take depression seriously and I'm making a joke of it uh, because of the ending of the video then you don't know me very well at all so anyways with that being said thanks for taking that video with however you're going to take it um, and I'm going to have a video talking about the, the subject matter in that later uh, but first I want to get one of these uh, horror movies out of the way uh, to, to watch or you know avoid uh, I believe I got ten here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nope, nine. I'm one shy. Ah, <laughs> uh, fuck it. I'm gonna grab this random one here to make it number ten. All right, so I'm gonna start off with this. This is the town that's that dreaded sundown. This is the remake. Um. I think the original one was in like the late uh, late eighties, early nineties. I'm not sure, maybe earlier. Um, but uh, I like this one. It says from the producers of Paranormal Activity, The Purge, and Insidious. Uh, I'm sure this is Blum. Yep, yeah, Blumhouse Productions. Um, who else was involved with this? Is James is James Wan involved with this? Nope. Just Jason Bloom. Blum. Either way, this is really good. Uh, um, I haven't seen the first one, so I don't really have anything to compare it to, except that uh, it, this is probably way better than the first one. Uh, I can almost guarantee this is way better than the first one. There's pretty cool storyline. Uh, some of the kills are pretty gruesome. The pacing is nicely done. Um, has an actor that I don't really take all that seriously. Has that guy in it, but he, uh, I think he is actually pretty serious in this one. I don't think he's like a jokester in this one, if that's who I'm thinking it is. Um, but yeah, definitely, definitely go check this out if you, uh, if you've never heard of it before. The Town That Dreaded Sundown is decent. I definitely give it like an 8 out of 10. It's a, it's a really good movie. And hell, it's Jason Blum. You, you can't go wrong with Jason Blum. He's a fucking man. Check it out. Next, uh, there's going to be quite a few of these, by the way. But this is an After Dark Horror Fest. This is from Wave 4. This is called Kill Theory. Now, what it says is, uh, Kill Theory is a fast-paced slasher flick that doesn't disappoint. Seven college students visit a secluded vacation home to ce celebrate their graduation and become trapped in a deadly game poised by a mysterious killer, forced to kill each other off by 6 a.m. if there's anyone left besides one person you'll kill the rest of them so or they all die or something but this was actually really good this was uh this was a pleasant surprise uh take like you know it's 
it's your average kind of teenage slasher kind of film. Uh, they all have to pit against each other. Their their the friendships become like really tense and and uh, tested, and people start kind of doubting each other. People start you know plotting against each other because you know the countdown to six a.m. is coming and they don't know who's going to turn against each other. It's it's really cool. Uh, there's like not too much nudity in this. I think there's like one you know, scene where this chick's topless and that's it. But it doesn't need it. This is actually a really good film. Uh, it has that one really short, skinny girl from The Orange is the New Black. Uh, so if you like The Orange is the New Black show and you like that character, uh, then watch this if you, you know, want to follow what they're up to in the horror scene or what they did before that. I'm pretty sure this came before The Orange is the New Black series. Um, it's, it's the girl that has, like, the really awful teeth and she's like a bible thumper and she gets her ass beat by the main character in the end of the second season or end of the first season one of the two um but yeah this is good i definitely recommend this this is a 9.5 out of 10 um some of the kill scenes are pretty unique um pe some people return in it that you think are dead that you would be like wait what and uh, there's there's some i mean at least for me there's some pretty interesting twists to it uh, I wish the killer was involved a little bit more in what happens. I don't want to give it away, but he seems to be mostly just kind of watching from afar, not doing too much like straight up killing. Most of the killing comes from the friends on friends murder. But uh, yeah, definitely check out Kill Theory if you can. Good stuff. I got this from eBay for about nine or ten bucks. So check it out. Next is another uh, After Dark Horror Fest film from Fourth Wave. This is called The Graves. This, uh, I don't know, this, the funny thing about this, I don't know if you can see that or not, but this is uh, Region 2. Uh, I'm, I'm Region 1, okay? I'm North America, I'm Canada. This shouldn't even play in my DVD player. I'm I'm lucky as fuck that this even played in my DVD player, Blu-ray, 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 Blu-ray player. And, um... Luckily, I was able to have it actually play, and I found a, a way to actually watch this in English, but it had French subtitles underneath, so it's like, whatever, I can ignore the title subtitles. But, I don't know. It's got some cool people in this. Like, it's got Bill Mosley, who plays Otis um, in The Devil's Rejects and The House of a Thousand Corpses, and it's got Tony Todd who I believe is the Candyman. Either way, if that's not his name, it's got the Candyman. The guy that plays Candyman, he's in this too as like this weird kind of priest. Uh, but yeah, basically these two chicks there, they, they go to this random town because they're trying to get somewhere and they run across the locals who are telling them about this tourist kind of place that they should check out. They go check it out. And of course, there's some crazy supernatural shit that's going on and some people that are trying to murder them and sacrifice to their their deity that they worship uh, or this demon. And it's uh it the yeah, acting is not the greatest. It's uh I I've seen a lot better, definitely. Like and there's no nudity. 99% sure there's no nudity, so if you're looking for like one of those cheap horror movie thrills and seeing a titty or two, not happening in this one. Uh, you get some, you know, eye candy, I guess. Your stereotypical hot chick, if you want to consider them that, are in it, but that's about it. Um, nothing too shocking or scary happens. The kills are not even that great. I. Uh... I don't know. It's it's still worth your time to check and check out and see if, if it's up your alley, but it's you're not going to be super duper impressed. It's not super duper well produced or anything like that. There's no grandiose theatrical feeling from it. It's just your average kind of watch it and forget it kind of horror film. Um, I'm just going to go to five out of ten. It was average. Next, this is yeah, this is another. After Dark Horror Fest film from Way 4. This is ZMD, Zombies of Mass Destruction. It's um, it's your kind of dark comedy type of horror movie. Like they say, they compare it to you know Shaun of the Dead, 
But honestly, Shaun of the Dead is way better than this, and I don't even like British comedy. Um, there's some funny stuff in this. Like, definitely give this a watch. Like, I'm gonna say this is way better than The Graves for sure. There's there's definitely some funny shit in here. There's also some if you're like LGBT, or if you're a f if you're just if you're not white, if you're foreign to you know North America. You're gonna find this kind of cringeworthy at points and kind of offensive, and you're gonna you're gonna get your your jimmies rustled a bit because of how some of the white people, white straight religious people, treat the other characters in this film. But honestly, it just it makes you want them to die more, and when they finally die, it's a little more satisfying. It uh, makes your dick a little hard when you finally see them die because they're bigoted assholes, and it's uh, it's very satisfying. So if you like zombie horror flicks that are similar to Shaun of the Dead with some dark comedy and some assholes that just need to die watch this, Zombies of Mass Destruction um 6.5 out of 10 alright next, keeping up with the zombie films this is the newest Dead Rising film called Endgame um Jesse Metcalf aka John Tucker uh no, he's actually Chase in this film. Um, it's all right. It's it kind of reminds me of the first Resident Evil a bit, without like the super zombies, um, without the muted T virus kind of zombies. Just got the regular kind of zombies, and there's some zombies in here that like run. So there's a little bit of like the Twenty Eight Days Later kind of zombies in here as well, because I guess they're sort of being tested on or something. Um, Billy Zane's in this. Do you remember him from The Phantom or Titanic? Yeah, he's in this too. He's a creepy doctor who's working on some special zombies. Um, yeah, I mean, this one's just as good as the first one, I think. Uh, nothing super duper memorable. They make some interesting weapons like you can make in the game in it. Uh, Jesse Metcalf or Chase has got a new love interest in this. Uh, by the end of the film... Spoiler alert, by the way, if you want to skip ahead 10 seconds, he meets his uh, significant other from the first film, and she comes back, and there's kind of like a little tension there, but whatever. Some of the zombie kills are pretty neat. Um, yeah, it's it's not amazing, but it's not terrible. 5 out of 10. Dead Rising Endgame. All right, back to another... Phase 4 After Dark Horror Fest film. This is Lake Mungo. This was... Uh, it is kind of disappointing, but at the same time, you know, for what it was, it was okay. This is a um, kind of like a mockumentary. But they're not really mocking anything. It's just a film in a documentary style about something that happened. That just did, It's like a fictitious happening. Uh, a 16-year-old girl named Alice Palmer ends up drowning while swimming with her family at a local dam. Um, her body is later recovered, and the verdict is, you know, accidental. Uh, and, her, you know, her family buries her or whatever. But then the family kind of starts experiencing some supernatural occurrences. Uh, like, some... Her ghost is captured on, like, some, some photographs and in some videos. And then there's a twist midway through the movie... And then once that twist happens, there's some new information brought forward, and then that kind of follows it out to the very end. And honestly, I wish that I wish the twist didn't happen. I wish it just kind of continued on the, along the way that they were kind of showing you that it was going along, uh, because the actual ending just is a little lackluster. I I don't give a fuck about what she was doing with the neighbors. Spoiler, I guess I'm not gonna really say anything. It doesn't really changed my view on the character at all and the end was just kind of okay I guess it was alright, it, it was interesting for the time I watched it I'm probably not going to watch it again until I forget what the movie was about so in maybe like 5 or 6 years I might watch it again but I'm glad to have it because I'm a big fan of After Dark Horror Fest and I'm probably going to try and get as many of the films in the waves that I can so like Mungo from Wave 4 of the After Dark Horror Fest gets some 5.5, maybe a 6 out of, uh, 6 out of 10. Alright, now this isn't really a horror movie, but it says horror in it. And a lot of people are probably going to either shit on this, 
or love it. Now, this is the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Let's do the time warp again. This was a, I guess, made-for-TV remake? Or, or a sequel? No, it's not a sequel. It's a remake. Um, it's a modern remake made for TV, I guess. And then they put it on DVD as a movie. And honestly, this was good. I, I know a lot of people are probably going to hate on it because, oh, you know, um, what's his name? Wasn't the main character. Yeah, Tim Curry. But he's a, he's a, he plays a character in this. Tim Curry plays the the narrator from the first one who just kind of sits in the chair at the beginning and talks about what happens. Uh, the characters in this are still decent. Honestly, some of the main cast is a little bit more attractive than the ones from uh, the first film. Because they're kind of... Uh, um, it's kind of funny because I, people are like, Oh, well, th this person is not even a guy. They're not even being a transvestite. Um, I don't know if you know who Laverne Cox is. I believe that's her name. Um, yep. Laverne Cox. I had to look for a second. Apologize for that. She's a male to female transgendered woman. So, honestly, I think that makes this a little bit more authentic as opposed to Tim Curry, who's straight cis male, who's not an actual, you know, transgendered or transsexual or or transvestite person, just just for that one movie he was. But this is a little more authentic. You got an actual LGBT transgendered person playing, you know, Dr. Frankenfurter. The only thing is, I don't know if this one was trying to portray an actual man dressed up as a woman. Because that's what Dr. Frankenfurter was in the original film. Because this guy here, who plays the, the lead character from the first one, uh, the main guy, he... After, you know, the time warp, time warp song goes on and everything goes on and blah, 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 and they get seduced by, you know, Dr. Frankfurter, he goes, oh, why don't you just leave her alone or, you know, let her go back to whatever. He calls Dr. Dr. Frankfurter a her. But Dr. Frankfurter is a man who dresses like a woman. So I don't know if that was a mistake on the writing part or if that was a mistake on the actor's part or if Laverne Cox said... You know, I don't identify as a man. I identify as a woman, so I don't want the actors to refer to me as a man on here, even though my character is supposed to be playing a man dressed as a woman. So I don't know what exactly is going on with that. It was just confusing, but it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me at all. It, it was just kind of like, hmm. It just kind of left a few questions in here, like why are they calling her a woman when it's actually supposed to be a man dressed as a woman, hence the transvestite thing. But either way, that's that's all besides the point. What I thought of the movie was it was a nice modern version of the Rocky, Rocky Horror Picture Show. The The person that plays Rocky is pretty much dead on like the first film is. Uh, the person that plays the character that Meatloaf played is uh, actually Adam Lambert. So that's kind of neat. I mean, he's no Meatloaf but at the same time, it doesn't need to be. The character was played the way it needed to be played. The acting was just as good, if not maybe a little bit, as the first one. It's like no one was awful. It's a little dated and kind of silly anyways. So you get what you pay for, really. And the only character I really just did not enjoy whatsoever and thought was weird was the uh, old guy, the old, I guess, science professor in the wheelchair. I didn't understand the necessity of his character at all or why he randomly had woman legs during the, the scene. Spoiler, maybe. But yeah, that was kind of weird. But uh, either way, just as I'd like this just as good as the first one. Um, not better, but just as good as the first one. So yeah, 8 out of 10. Shoot me if you don't care, if you don't agree. But I, I didn't find any problem with that. We're running into almost 20 minutes now. I'm going to hurry this up. Um, okay, this is good. This is called The Windmill. I really like this one. It was just kind of like an independent film from Australia, I believe. Or 
Fuck me. Oh, man, I don't have time to look for this. London? Official selection for Fright Fest? I don't know. Either way, this is a foreign film, uh, but it's English. There's no subtitles. I mean, you can select subtitles if you want, but there's no, like, other language dubs. Uh, it's good. It's, it was originally called The Windmill Massacre, but I guess the North America edition just got called The Windmill? But, uh, yeah. Uh, whoever rated this says it's Jeepers Creepers meets Friday the 13th. Scream Magazine. Um, the synopsis is a group of unsuspecting tourists awaken a mysterious evil while on a trip through the Dutch countryside. I don't know what to tell you. It's it's weird. It, I think it is supernatural. I, I'm pretty sure it's supernatural. Uh, the kills are kind of neat. There's like a, a boot stomping on a human face forever scene. Uh, any Anala Thrak fan should enjoy that reference. Wyatt, I'm looking at you. If you're even watching this, maybe I'm assuming too much. Probably am. Anyways, good good film. If you can check it out. Check it out. It's a decent horror film for what it is. There's some supernatural stuff. There's some kills. Uh, the main chick is fairly interesting, I guess. There's there's no nudity, at least not that I can recall. The story's decent, and some of the kills are interesting. And the the main the, the killer in this is pretty cool. Like I I love a, like a sequel or a prequel to the story behind the killer in this. Definitely check it out. Eight out of ten. Next, um, another one, the final, uh, this was kind of hard to track down because there's a lot of films that have the word final in it. Uh, you have to type in After Dark Horror Fest, the final, or the final 2010 to track it down. Either way, it didn't cost me too much, about nine or 10 bucks on eBay. Uh, this was fantastic. If you, if you're, if you were ever bullied in high school or if anyone ever gave you like harassment or some sort of. Being a giant dick to you in high school, this movie's for you. Because a bunch of the nerds get pissed off with all the jocks, and they, uh, they fuck their shit up. Pretty hardcore. Like, they're like, oh, I want to play a game. And the game isn't too nice. It's it's mutilation and torture and uh, some mind fuckery that you got to see. Definitely check out the final from the After Dark Horror Fest Wave 4. They wear some masks. They wear some outfits. They fucking take a cattle prod to the side of someone's face. They cut some fingers off. They... Man, it's good shit. They, they pour acid on someone's face. This is very Saw meets, like... I don't know, Jawbreaker. <laughs> Definitely check this out. Nine, nine out of ten. That was a great film. And finally, last one before this video gets way too fucking long. Um, this is Don't Breathe. This was good. Not as good as I was expecting it, and, you know, certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, but honestly, Rotten Tomatoes can kiss my fucking ass, because they've rated so many good films trash. Uh, so they can blow me. They can blow me seven ways from Tuesday. Uh, now, it says it comes from the twisted minds behind Evil Dead. Um... It revolves around three young thieves that try to break into some homes to get some valuables and some money and stuff like that. Uh, but the guy they're robbing is blind. He can't see. Uh, I think he's a war veteran or something like that. And he's got a dark secret. And he wants to keep that secret. Well, a secret. So when these good people break in, shit goes downhill. Pretty damn quickly. Uh, the, the first part of the film is kind of like slow-ish for the first, you know, 15, 20 minutes. But then shit starts going on. Start, starts getting freaky. They get picked off one by one. Uh, and the secret's kind of weird. And then there's a scene in here that you're just like... If you're straight, you're going to gag. That's all I have to say. If you're a straight man and uh, you see this scene, you're probably going to throw up a little bit in and around your mouth. So, yeah. It's good. I mean, now that I know what the secret is behind all this, and now that I know what the big reveal is, it's it's you know it's gonna kind of take away from the rewatch, uh, you know, ability of this. But I'm gonna say in a year or two, I'm gonna watch again and be like, damn, damn, that shit's pretty sweet again. Um, but yeah, so good film, seven point five out of ten. Not as amazing as everyone was making it out to be, but it was definitely good, and I definitely don't hate on it at all. 
So yeah, I think the lowest rating one out of all this is uh, probably Dead Ri or The Graves. Everything else was above, five or above. So check those out. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for some more shit on the Black Metal Rebellion channel here. Uh, I got some reviews coming up this week because I got some shit in the mail that I definitely wasn't expecting from some totally generous and cool people. So thanks to those people and you'll find out really soon what it is. Stay sick and um, viva la rebellion, motherfuckers.